All right, everybody, thank you for checking in with me today. And today I'd like to talk about Palenque. And really what I want to talk about is the tomb that's underneath Palenque. And it's a very interesting um, conversation and a little bit of evidence that I'm not sure I ever heard anybody else discuss it. But, um, you know, I like to watch a lot of different scientific things, you know, um, I like a lot of things. I'm a, I'm a very curious person. But anyway, this man, Eric Von Daniken, if you don't know who he is, he's a guy that wrote a book called Chariots of the Gods, basically talking about um, UFOs being, you know, the Chariots of the Gods. And they spent a lot of years trying to debunk them, and, and they never really could. But he also participates in another show that I like, Ancient Aliens. And, you know, like I said, I like a lot of different stuff. But anyway, he is going to show, I'm going to show a clip by him where he's talking about uh, Pakal, the tomb that's under Palenque. And while we're watching it, I want you to grasp the actual age of this place. All right. <laughs> Palenque is the one sensation among the Maya. And I would say Palenque is the one sensation concerning the whole idea of extraterrestrials. In 1949, the Mexican archaeologist Professor Rutz discovered on the Temple of Inscription, but the Temple of Inscription is in reality a pyramid. He discovered a groove up on the top, and then they found a shaft. Inside the shaft, a stairway, staircase going down. It went down under the pyramid, but the staircase in that time, in 1949, was full with stone. So it took three years to dig out all these stones. In 1952, Professor Dr. Rutz, with his students in archaeology, they stand before a big door in the form, in the shape of a triangle. They never found a door in the shape of a triangle. The door was broken up, and Professor Rutz, with his uh, candles in his light, looked into a room, and he's, the first words he said, I don't believe my eyes. I see in a sort of chapel, and from the ceiling down are hanging things like, like candles. In reality, it were not candles, it was stalactites and stalagmites. So first, we need to address uh, stalagmites and stalactites. And stalagmites are the one that grow from the ground up, and stalactites are the one that grow from the ceiling down. The part about it is how long it actually takes for them to form. And in this particular article, they were saying something along the lines of uh, usually, what is it? Let's see at the bottom it says uh, limestone stalactites form extremely slowly, usually less than. 10 centimeters every thousand years and um, radiometric dating has shown that some are over 190 thousand years now you have to judge by how long they actually are and I'm gonna let the video continue but I just want to bring out the point that the fact that these things are under this tomb that's a hint at the actual antiquity of this site but let's continue the room is seven meter long and on the, on the bottom there was a big plate with big, I mean, 3.80 meter long, 2.20 meter large. Of course, we live in a reasonable society and our science always looks for the next reasonable answer before they go into speco speculation, which is normal, which makes, makes sense. Around this stone plate, there was an inscription, and only a few words they could decipher. For example, the word Pakal. And they knew Pakal was the second last ruler of the city of Palenque. So they said, this man sitting in this frame inside, inside he represents Pakal. And they said, he's not sitting in a frame. The frame in reality shows the open mouth of a mythological monster. So what I look as frame, it's just the teeth of the mythological monster. And he's falling into the mouth of this mythological monster. But out of his chest, you see the living tree or the tree of life, etc. And what 
I uh, explained uh, something like a Lincoln flame coming out at the end. Archaeologists said, no, these are just the stylized hairs of the beard of the weather god. So this was an archaeological suggestion when they found this tombstone of Palenque in 1952. In the meantime, from 1952 until today, I have read in the scientific literature 14 different explanations what this should mean. It is always Pakal, that's for sure. Pakal, the second last ruler. And now, just a few years ago, the two leading epigraphers, epigraphers are the, the people, the professors, who are able to read the Maya language. Our professor, Dr. John Stewart, and Stewart, because he's the father and the son, Stewart and Stewart, and they know everything now in Maya graphics, in Maya writing, and they say, Yes, it is Pakal, but Pakal is not falling into the open mouth of a mythological monster. He has nothing to do with cross of, of life or tree of life. Every little thing which is chiseled in the stone has to do with the universe. Pakal is in fact leaving the earth, flying out to the universe. So I want to address the you know claim that he just made, which was that this is of Pakal in a ship and a flying device and i personally believe that our ancient ancestors had this technology because they left many different records beyond this one showing them with the ability of flight and you see it actually globally so it makes sense that it's true but let's keep going so that stone the tombstone of palenque is still there in the original pyramid because it's too big they cannot put it out normally Pyramids were not tombs, but the so-called Temple of Inscription in Palenque, with, which is a pyramid, was in fact a tomb. Under this tombstone, there was a grave, and they found a skeleton, a skeleton and a mask. It's probably Pakal, Pakal, the second last ruler of Palenque. But what we do not understand, the normal Maya, their size was about one meter 50 to one meter 60. And that skeleton in there of Pakal is one meter 81. He's too big for a Maya. You know, one meter 80, 81 is, is not Maya-like. And also his nose is not human because the bone of his nose starts already on his front up there. So we say it's Pakal, but nobody is sure if it's Pakal. Now concerning the stalactites and stalagmites, you know, Soon, as a pyramid uh, is somehow broken and the rain goes into the pyramid, some uh, uh, stalactites and, and stalagmites start to form. But this takes an eternity. They found seven meter long stalactites and stalagmites in this room, which is situated under the pyramid. Don't forget this. Because of the stalactites, you could measure or calculate how old is this room. It does not fit to the Maya. The Maya is a relatively young society, and Palenque is more or less about 800 AD, so after Christ, it's not very old. Others say even younger, they say 1,400 after Christ. But it does not fit together with the stalactites and stalagmite. First, we had this tomb in the uh, down in the earth. This tomb was covered by this large tombstone stone with the chiseling of Pakal. And later, only on, they started to construct the pyramid over the tomb. The tomb is much older than the pyramid itself. I believe that first there was a tomb, tomb down with the holy figure, one of the gods or a mixture of the gods or an imitation of the gods. And they chiseled this into this gigantic tombstone. And this was there, a holy place for the Maya or the people who lived before the Maya for thousands of years. And only later, because it was a holy place, now they started to construct a pyramid, the so-called Temple of Inscription, over the old tomb. So in my suggestion, the tomb is probably 5,000 years old because of the stalactites and stalagmites. And the temple itself, the Temple of Inscription, is young, let's say maybe 1,500 years old. Okay, so we heard Mr. Van Daniken say that there were seven meter long stalactites and that equals 22 feet. Now, going back to that article when it was saying how that um, 
it takes 10, 10 centimeters every thousand years. Uh, and there are roughly 30 centimeters in a foot. So then that would mean roughly every foot is equal to about 30,000 years. So then at uh, 22 feet, that's like over 600,000 years. Now, that sounds like a long, long time. And one thing about it, we know that they underage the things that they find in the Americas. They, they do not want to admit the actual antiquity of the relics and things that's in America. Now, whether or not it's actually 600,000 years, I might be off. You know, that might be too much. It might be. I, I can't. But I'm just saying, if we're going by the measurements that they give, that's a long time. And again, they never really want to tell the truth about these things. Um, you know, all of the pyramids that we see, most of them have other pyramids inside of them, other temples inside of them. They keep rebuilding on the same site, so they really don't know how old the age of these things. A lot of times they guess and or they'll take a piece of material that they can carbon date to give a date. And that does not mean it's the age of that site because you can't carbon date stone. So we can never really be sure of the right age, but we know it's a lot older than they tell us. Well, thanks for stopping in with me. Until the next time, y'all be cool.